Thank you. It's an honor for me to be with you today. Usually, I'm here to enjoy a nice concert, but I hope today you appreciate my sound and take some interesting tunes with you. I want to talk about my passion for nuclear and also, of course, the decommissioning or the final stop of the 3 nuclear power plant. We will stop Dual 3. We have a plan and we will do it. We are ready. But what will be the impact of the nuclear phase out on the power grid, on the environment, but also on the society? And some decisions, like you have already heard, are still pending. But let me first talk about my passion for nuclear. When I was 12 years old, I already visited the construction of the Dual 1 2 nuclear power plant. It was impressive, and I was attracted by the image and mystery of nuclear. And I still have the key ring I've got in Dual with a sample of a uranium pellet explaining that this little thing has the same energy as one ton of coal. I wanted to understand and learn more about it. And finally, I became an engineer, like most of you in this room, perhaps. Today, more than 30 years working in the plants, I still learn a lot and feel impressed about the ground earth and beauty of the nuclear power plants and its technology. Myself, as well as all my talented colleagues in dual and triage nuclear power plants, are well aware of our huge responsibility when it comes to nuclear safety, performance and reliability of our plants. We strive for excellence. And according to the Nuclear Phase Out Law 2003, we have taken our responsibility to prepare for the final stop of Tool 3 after 40 years of production, the first in Belgium. On 1st October 2022, we will stop the plant for good. That's from today. Two years, seven months and 21 days. And every day counts. Like I said, this will have an important impact on the power grid, the environment, but also on the society. Let's go to the figures from yesterday. Take a look. Figures speak for themselves. They are today's reality. As you can see, nearly 50% or more of electricity generation is coming from our nuclear power plants. Let's go now, make a prediction, and go to the figures of 2025. Oh, sorry, uh, there's a blackout. Someone has a light in the room? <laughs> OK, thank you, thank you. Thank you. But I, I have the solution. We go back to nuclear. Let's do some research. And let's go back to nuclear, to reality. The 1st of October 22, Belgium will lose at once a yearly production of about 7,500,000 megawatt hours. That's about one tenth of the yearly energy production in Belgium. If we would replace this capacity by gas units, the emission of CO2 in Belgium would increase with 3.6 million tons. Four months later, this figure will double, will also Tiange 2 stops operations. Based on the current phase out law, Elia says that we need from 25 on 3.9 gigawatt of new capacity in Belgium that are fear for new nuclear plants. Whether or not we should keep the option nuclear open after 25 is a political decision. So we'll leave it to our new government. 
but time flies and every second counts. We are ready, are you? Today, I would nevertheless take the opportunity to give a personal opinion. We operate our plants as nuclear professionals and I'm convinced that after 25, our plants can play an important role in the energy transition and continue to produce safe, reliable electricity as, at a competitive cost. Moreover, it will help us to reach our climate objectives and to save our planet. To conclude, I have a final message. You see that time counts. This is an image from NASA, well known. You see the Saturn rings and our moon, and the little blue dot is our planet Earth. It reminds us of our humble existence. This is an image that should be shown at the beginning and the end of the year, in every school, every university, every company, every cabinet, with the question, what have you learned and what have you done to make it a better world? And I hope in the near future, we can generate all our energy with renewable energy sources. But in the meantime, I do believe we need nuclear power to make that transition. So far, my personal point of view, I tell now something about decommissioning. Post-operational phase in decommissioning starts when the generator has been disconnected from the grid. And it ends when the last fuel elements left the plant, important risks are removed, and all systems are cleared. And dismantling can begin when the new dismantling license has been obtained, and it ends when all materials are removed and the plant is clean. But why is this a big challenge? We are entering a new business, from operations to decommissioning to dismantling. We will need an important change of mindset of our people. A lot of our stars started working in the 80s, and their main mission was to operate our plants safe and stable. Now they have to do other and new tasks in project mode, in a more flexible, innovative way, and in continuous changing conditions. This asks a lot of our people, but we will be ready. And of course, the technical status, the organization and the licensing framework will change during these different phases of the post-operational period. So coherence has to be maintained and monitored with nuclear safety as the overriding priority. The post-operational activities will be done in different phases, starting October 22 and ending February 28. We will start by unloading all fuel elements out of the reactor, then we will do the chemical decontamination of the systems, followed by the dry storage of the spent fuel and taking out of systems. At the end, we do a fine cleaning. But let us focus now on two important activities. First, the chemical decontamination, and secondly, the defueling. During the chemical decontamination, as you see in this picture, we will clean the systems around the reactor in order to remove the activated particles. Specific chemical products will be added in the system and circulate during some cycles in the systems until the sectic factory decontamination factor has been reached. The goal of this decontamination is dose reduction for the workers, secondly, minimize the risks during dismantling, and reduce the amount of high-level radioactive waste. Another important activity is the defueling. All fueling elements have to be unloaded from the reactor and transported to, towards the spent fuel pool, a standard operation like we do in a normal outage. When fuel elements are cooled down after three years, they will be stored in specially designed containers, so-called canisters, and placed in a storage building 
on site. The permit procedure for the construction and operation of a new facility on site is currently ongoing. But this intermediate storage on site is essential because a decision regarding the final disposal of highly reactive waste is still pending in Belgium. And we need those facilities, otherwise dismantling can't start. After the post-operational phase, dismantling will follow for each plant. First, decontamination and dismantling in the controlled area, and afterwards, also the conventional demolition and the site release. This will be one of the largest projects we have ever done with application of interesting techniques and technologies like complex underwater cutting and techniques and special robotics. In the current planning, and depending on the unit, we will estimate the duration of the dismantling and release of the site between 10 and 15 years. In the nuclear provision, there is an amount of about 1 billion euros foreseen for the dismantling of a nuclear power plant. Today, an integrated team, Electrabel, Tractabel, is working on the preparation of the dismantling of Dual 3 and Tianj 2 power plants. And we benchmark with other operators, like you see in this picture with Necker Westheim, but also with Mühleberg, Ringals, Fessenheim, and similar projects in Belgium like BR3 and Mol. We can also rely on a lot of experience, skills, and competences within the NG group. We are ready. Stopping and dismantling of a nuclear plant also means developing waste solutions in close collaboration with NIRAS, FANC, Belvé. The demolition of a nuclear plant mainly creates non-radioactive waste. But some of this reactive material can be further decontaminated and treated as conventional waste and recycled. Another part has to be processed and stored depending on the type of waste. As you can see in yellow on the graph, only a small portion, about 1% of the total material, has to be stored as radioactive waste. For these large projects and challenges, we need flexible and competent talents. The final stop of a nuclear power plant will have an impact on the organization and staffing but also creates a lot of challenges. We are talking with people now about their concerns and give them an individual perspective and image to the future in order to keep them on board and motivated. I hope this year things become more clear for us and that we, besides the professional preparation of the dismantling of our units, we also can start on some new long-term projects. And finally, I'm convinced that Belgium needs us to provide safe, reliable, carbon-free and cost-efficient energy. And Electrabel can offer this package. We have the solution. We are ready. So what did you learn now and what will you do? Let's do it together. We are ready. Are you?